Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. So in this video, I want to talk to you about composition. And this one is going to be about the Eiffel Tower. We are here in Paris on the Biarritz Bridge. And it's really a very cold day. Although we're in May, I'm freezing, but I'm still going to try to get some great composition. Composition is the art of telling a story through a photo. And I want to do it on the subject of seascape. I want to show you my process and hopefully teach you a few things about composition. So let's get started. So usually when the, when the sky is so bright, I always, I don't use a tripod, I start by hand because I, I like to use the tripod only when I do long exposure or when it gets really dark. But if not, I like to uh, find framing that really works and maybe come back later when the light is nicer. When you have a bad day like today, you still have a great blue hour. If you get a bit of details in the sky and there is detail in the sky, you might get even a, a great blue hour. You're not going to get a golden hour, you're not going to get a sunset, but you're going to get a blue hour. So what I usually do, I come early and I look for framing. Today I'm shooting with a 37R5 and a 1224, but I also got a 70 to 300. I on purpose took this two extreme lens to do really extreme composition. So let's start searching for composition. I want to take a classic shot of the Eiffel Tower with this statue here, see if it's going to work. So one thing I like to do is I always spot focus. So I have a little, I have a little thing here where I can move around and decide where I want to focus. That's very important to me. I'm always trying to be at 100 ISO. Right now we have a lot of light and I always underexpose my photos, so I make them a little darker. So we have the Eiffel Tower, we have the statue. I might wait for the people to leave. I kind of like this, this photo because there is like leading lines here. But right now, if I take the shot, if I take the shot, I have people in the frame. You see, one of the rules of composition is what is the story you want to tell? Take out anything that does not contribute to your story. So having tourists in my shot is not helping. So I either need to frame it differently or I need to um, wait that they move. So I'm going to try from it differently. The problem is that the floor is very bright. And so the eyes always go to the brightest part of the photo. And so Ah, it's not really interesting. It's always kind of cool to find a photo where first it's black and then it's white in the middle so you can really focus inside. So I'm just going to move a little bit. So what I'm doing now is I'm sort of framing it with this, uh, this thing and I'm really underexposed. You'll see the photos are really dark because I want to get all the detail of that sky. I really want to get the drama of the sky. I'm probably going to retouch all of that in black and white anyway because there's no colors. And I have a saying, no colors equals black and white. But I don't know, I feel it's very classical. I feel that's a shot that everybody's getting. So we must find something else. But we're in luck. We are in front of the Biarritz Bridge, also known as the Inception Bridge. You can see that bridge, you know, in, where Leonardo DiCaprio gets the bridge like as a sandwich over him. I always thought that this bridge was built by the same man who built the Eiffel Tower. Turns out it's not the case, but it's a very similar style. And so I want to play with the bridge and the Eiffel Tower to do like frame in a frame. So let's go to the side of the bridge and see if we can do like frames in the frames. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to try to do a frame in a frame with the bridge and the Eiffel Tower. Let's try here. And uh, This photo doesn't work for me because we see a lot of people there. So it doesn't really work. I gotta maybe move. You want something clean. Always ask yourself, what can I take out that's gonna make the photo better? That's gonna help tell the story. I gotta get rid of these people. I can't, they won't move, so I'm, I'm gonna have to move. I wanna try to do a frame in the frame. You see with this thing, I wanna try to see if I can do a frame of the frame of the Eiffel Tower. Let's see if it works.
Now, when you do this kind of photo, you gotta be really very straight. If you go up or if you go down, it's not gonna work because it's gonna get very distorted. Now, what I love is that it's actually very dark in the foreground. I did not expect that. There's a lot of people in the shot, but they are pretty far away. I think this shot is gonna work pretty well. This is actually a cool shot. I love the leading lines to the nice building. I'm just waiting for one car. I would like one car to be in the shot. Here's a car. Yeah, I'm waiting because I like the, I think I'm gonna go a little faster. Yeah, underexposed even more. Yeah, boom, boom. I like when there's one car that's kind of away because the light gets you inside of the photo. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so now this is a 7300, one of my favorite lens. Sometimes I even force myself to walk around with this lens because it forces you to compose differently than a wide lens. You have to go for details and things like this. And I love this bridge. So my idea is I want to go this way and try shooting the bridge. Try to do a frame in a frame by compressing the bridge against the Eiffel Tower. And um, even everything that I've shot so far, I kind of like it, but light is really bad. So I might, there's a few shots like the frame in a frame here and there that I might redo at blue hour when, when the light is better. So we'll see. So I have an idea of a, of a shot is I want to see if I can compress, do a frame in the frame of the bridge, but by shooting uh, with a 7200, I'm going to compress a lot the shot. Ooh, I love it. I love it, but the light is so awful. So I tried to use uh, the tree as a foreground element. It doesn't work. It works better if we really go between the tree and, uh, and, and uh, the two trees, basically. I'm going to try. Yeah, I'm trying to shoot the bridge like this. It doesn't work for me either. I'm trying to shoot the river and it's awful. So we're gonna have to wait for the blue hour. In one hour, I'm freezing to get the shot. But I, you know, as I said, I like to sort of frame stuff. This one really works for me but you will see at the blue hour, it's gonna be amazing. Let's try, I wanna do something crazy. Now, the next shot I wanna try, honestly, I've tried it before and it works. And something I've seen on the web for about 10 years, and it's a crazy, crazy frame in a frame of the Sacré Coeur, which is in Montmartre, like miles away with the bridge. And um, you need a 600 millimeters to do it, but I'm gonna do it with a 300 and then I'm gonna crop in big time. So let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way, try this crazy photo, and then I think I got uh, at least like three or four good shots where I'm just gonna wait for the right light and boom, get it. Okay, I'm gonna try to shoot it from here. Let's see what I can do. Now it doesn't work. I don't see, I think we're too low. If I, I research it, it's actually, we have to go higher up. Might be dangerous because we have to go between two highways. So if I die, this will be my last photo. You see that photo doesn't work for me because, uh, that photo doesn't work for me because um, the lamps is over the sacred curve. So maybe we need to go a bit lower. Yeah, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. I love this. You see what I did is I moved down a little bit until the two lamps are really detached from the Sacré Coeur. And I love it. Right now I'm shooting by hand because the light is very bright and I'm at 300 millimeter. So a good rule of thumb is make sure you have a very fast speed uh, and that your speed is at least 
higher than the millimeter. So if you had 300 millimeter, you need to be at 320 or 400. Why not? I'm at 320, F5.6, ISO 1000. So I want to get a clean shot on this one. I want to get it at 100 ISO. So I'm going to take my tripod. By the way, uh, this is, uh, I love this brand. It's called Sirio. They are waterproof uh, tripods. I really like this one. Um, I like this one because I can go low. There is no like middle thing that's stopping me from going low. And, um, and then I use a really right stuff ball head. I've had this for about 12 years. Really nice ball head. So this one you want to shoot at 100 ISO. What I do is I put my camera on, on a self timer. Okay, so let's frame it. So I'm at 100 ISO F5.6. F5.6 is the widest I can be. And uh, I'm gonna go pretty slow. I'm gonna go, yeah, 1 30th of a second, which is for this lens. You need to have no movement. So I'm gonna put a self timer on because I don't have a remote. And let's see, boom. Then you zoom in and you make sure you double click on your photo with your finger. So you double click here and you see, ah, it's not great. This is very sharp, but I didn't focus on the sacré cœur. So let me take it again. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to menu and I'm gonna, you see, instead of having a spot, which is M, I'm gonna make it small. By making it small, I can really put it over the sacré cœur. And hopefully, you see right now, I'm really over the sacré cœur and hopefully, let's see if it's sharp now. Zoom in, yes. Look at that, razor sharp. Okay, somebody went by, uh, but now I need, I need a, you see, the problem is that this photo doesn't work for me because the, the barrier is out of focus and the sacré cœur is in focus. I'd like to get both. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go like F13 and I'm just gonna have to go slower, but I don't care, I'm on a tripod, so it should work. And because I use a small focus, I should be good. Let's try this. All right, let's go. Let's zoom in. Wow, look at that. Everything is sharp. The bridge is sharp. Everything is sharp. Totally works for me. Look at that. I'm going to show you the framing. That's going to be the final shot. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so I'm happy with what I got. I got the right composition now. The light is still very bad. We're just going to wait like maybe half an hour until it gets more blue so we can shoot the blue hour. And I'm just going to run this shot over there get all the frame in the frame, all the good composition, redo it at the blue hour, and let's see how it comes out. So, see you in 30 minutes. So now the blue hour is hit. I, we warmed up a little bit in the bar because I was so cold, and uh, I'm just gonna shoot all the best photos. So follow me and let's get the right photo at the right time. I think I got it. Make sure when you take a photo, you pinch in and you make sure that it's sharp and then you can move on. It's not gonna get any better, so let's move to the next location. The point with the blue hour, it gets very fast, too contrasty. So I got literally about 10, more, 10 minutes. When the city lights are on, 10 minutes and boom, it's over, it's too contrasty. Let's go. You see, I think we have an opening right there where I can zoom in. The problem is that this is made, there's a lot of leaf everywhere, and I'm gonna to try to get an opening where I can get the bridge and the Eiffel Tower. And in exactly five minutes, the Eiffel Tower is gonna to turn on with beautiful light. This photo, I'm not gonna be able to sell, I'm gonna to have to pay royalties on it, but it's so good, I wanna get it. So I did find an opening where I'm, I'm really like, Zooming in, I just want to get the bottom of the Eiffel Tower frame in the frame. Let's see. I'm at one second of exposure, 1.3. So always make sure it's sharp. Yeah, it's good. It's a little bit crooked, so I'm going to make it better. In two minutes, the lights are going to come on and it's just going to look spectacular. I want to get it when the train is coming. I want to get it that. And then once I got that shot, 
I'm gonna go back on the 12-24. We're gonna run and take like the frame in the frame of a few other shots that we took earlier with the right light. You see, what blows my mind is that we had a very rainy day. It was white, it was disgusting. And now we're at the blue hour. And for about 10 minutes, we have like God giving us a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful light. So no matter how bad things can get, uh, you know, where you have like a, just really a bad light, if you shoot right after the city lights are on, you always get a good shot. So I always have at least that 10 minutes per day. So what I do is, what we did today is I work out on my composition when the light is poor. And when the light is right, I just get the one, two, three, four shots, which I think are gonna be the winning shots. Okay, so the lights of the FL Tower just turned on. It's gonna be about three minutes. So I'm gonna get the shots. Take your time. Make sure that every shot is sharp. Again, you have to pay royalties on this photo, and I will if I sell it, but I wanna have it. Yeah, three minutes to get the shots. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Change the lens now, I'm gonna to run to see if I can get some of the shots with that light. I checked the sharpness of everything. So I'm gonna really change lens really fast and I'm gonna run. I'm not sure I like what I'm doing, but okay. Let's try the last one. To be honest, I don't like what I'm doing because, oh, the lights turn off. I'm gonna shoot that side. I don't like what I'm doing because uh, it's, uh, the floor is very bright. Uh, I don't know, I don't think it's gonna work. I think the one I shot at 200 is gonna be nicer. Okay. Okay, I wanted to take the frame in the frame, but you see now the frame is very light, very bright. There's a lot of people, there's a car. It's not gonna work. Anyway, I'm happy with what I got. I'm gonna check it on a big screen. Hopefully we got some nice compositions. You know, I've been doing this for 17 years and I really, really love it because you know, it's, it's like fishing. I used to fish when I was a kid where you go, sometimes you get great photos, sometimes you don't but it's a sport and I hope by seeing, I, I, you know, out of all the photos I, sh I shot, it's probably only gonna be two or three, which are gonna be good. You know, the ones which really have a strong story where everything was taken out that did not help the story, everything that helped the story was put in and that we have something nice that really communicates. So, you know, let's check it out on a big computer and see which one works, which one doesn't work. <laughs>